Hello, I'm going to mock up a JSON API and I am going to then uh, basically uh, bring in that data into an A-frame application, use D3 uh, to uh, represent that data in a graph, use the HTML embed component to embed the graph within the you know a frame scene uh, and then I'm also going to apply a grabbable component um, to a parent um, plane basically that I'm going to use to um, to make it grabbable and then yeah let's take a look at what this involves uh, first of all i uh, just going to give an overview here of the A-Frame application. Now, I have some more stuff in here, obviously, because this is like related to also my uh, the course I teach. Um, so I have other stuff in here from my game engine and stuff. But over here, I just included the D3.js um, right over here uh, at the, in the head. And in the uh, bottom of the body, I included this D3 tree from JS or d3 tree from json.js and that's going to do the um, the bulk of the work. I've also put at the top over here I put in a little style tag section here for some of the graph parts and this was just taken from a little gist, a little example from the d3 um, examples and uh, and then down in here in the actual scene uh, this is what I have set up here for the in the scene. I basically let me make this a little clearer here. So uh, basically, I made a plane that is a parent of uh, this other entity. The plane is going to be partly you know, transparent, partly transparent, at least uh, 0.5 opacity, um, and it is going to be grabbable. So I have a grabbable component so I can move it around. Um, and then its child is, is this entity here that's going to have the HTML embed component on it uh, so that we can render the HTML inside of the VR world in, in the A-frame scene. So, and then I just put in a little H1 tag just as a header for the whole thing and it just says remotely fetch JSON data. And I'm centering it. I, I put some inline styles just to just to do that and then I offset the the Z so that this graph is not going to run into any Z conflict with the the plane so having done that let's take a look at the code over here um, d3 tree from json.js um, it's basically just a gist that I took from you know github um, that uses one of the basic examples for making a tree um, graph with D3 and I just edited it a little bit. So it basically is making an SVG element. Um, it, it's first of all, I'm having it select that uh, particular uh, entity that had the graph one as being the ID and we're appending an SVG element to it with these dimensions, uh, applying a G node to it so that we can do some further uh, drawing inside of that and organize the SVG according to that. Uh, and then we're going to offset it a little bit in the, you know, the X and Y direction right there. Um, and then we're going to down here, we're going to do a little fetch uh, to just another little mocked, uh, uh, well, it's a, I guess it's a true endpoint. Uh, it's, a, it's a remote endpoint, but I just, I'm not fetching the data from a uh, database or anything. I'm just actually reading from a JSON file. So that part of it's mocked up. Um, so I'm reaching out to that website, which I guess I'm gonna show you. It's just, I just made that at REPL really fast. I just threw together a little Node Express app and it's just serving up. Um, so I'm using the cores right over here. I'm using the cores uh, package uh, so that I don't have any cores issues. I'm setting the content type to JSON and I'm um, sending this file uh, data.json which is just basically the file that came along with the example. So I'm just serving that up from this express server using the cores package and using uh, setting the header, you know, calling this uh, this cores uh, 
function here on the the endpoint right here um, and that's pretty much it for setting that up once uh, this call is made uh, once the actual here's the callback so once that uh, data is retrieved then it sets the data that's retrieved um, at least the uh, it sets the first value as the root um, this root um, variable uh, and then it runs update on that root variable so it takes that data um, which is actually receiving it here um, and it's just saying that the first element is using array accessor notation it's taking that first uh, element that's returned um, and saying that's the root and then over here here's the update function in the update function it's going through the process of uh, getting the nodes here from the source and going through each of the nodes and adding a G node to them and then styling um, circle and text accordingly and then uh, making a connection a link a link between them basically uh, a graphical link that connects the nodes and you'll see that in a moment um, so that's basically what it does um, it gets the data from right here um, and then it go ahead it updates that SVG according to the data uh, down right here okay so let's go see what that looks like look now there we go it sets the data so, there it welcome is welcome to CS1 Community Park please join us at 9 p.m. for some tasty roasted marshmallow s'mores walk around with it it's not interactive right now there's nothing that can click on or move around at this point but it got the data from the the remote source um, and it proceeded to take the D3 uh, library to formulate a graph and use the HTML embed to embed it using grabbable to do the obviously making it grabbable so if you have any questions on this uh, I'll just post a, a, a glitch link as well to this uh, project um, I can clean it up if you want to but yeah you know, pretty much uh, it should be Fairly self-explanatory, but go ahead and reach out and tell me if you have any questions.